I'm very fond of the 12-step process. I'm also fond of other approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, radical honesty is you know, step one. The principle is honesty. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious how you navigate, which you also did such a lovely job describing in the book. And I think this is hard for me as a clinician, the, the sort of self-disclosure stuff around how we share our experiences in a way that's helpful and informative mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to self-serving. And I think mm -hmm. the field, maybe it doesn't take too long, a little history on why, to me, it just seems counterproductive for the therapist to be a brick wall. Mm -hmm. And right. you often hear, you hear that often, maybe not a brick wall, but where they're very sort of nothing is said about them. Right. And there's a mm -hmm. whole philosophy behind that. So I'm curious how you see the radical honesty in terms of, I think you even mentioned in the book, it's a preventative measure to addiction, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. Yeah. you gave the family example. I don't think you had this the chocolate bunny story, which is right. great. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, maybe I'm too honest with my kids because I'm, I'm very sensitive to the honesty yeah. piece. So there's the personal honesty and how that fits into recovery. And then maybe more as a clinician or just a human being, how do you see the concept of self-disclosure and psychotherapy and in helping people? Yeah. Well, thank you for that. You know, I have been greatly influenced by Alcoholics Anonymous and other 12-step groups uh, in my psychiatric career and have come to see the incredible value of people sharing uh, in a judicious way when they've struggled with something similar uh, to a person who is really in the midst of, of, of a crisis. And, um, you know, the, and, and as such, over the course of my career, I have moved further and further away from this idea that we are a blank wall and that we are just like a Teflon that their stuff bounces off of mm -hmm. and really more braced in this idea that we, we couldn't really, um, we couldn't really hide ourselves if we tried. Like there are so <laughs> many ways that we are present. And I have also become really convinced that the realness of our presence is actually very helpful to patients. Because when you're working in the transference, what can be so healing for them is to like have an honest interactions where my feelings to some extent in a measured mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, thoughtful mm -hmm. way, you know, become part of the work that we do together so that there's a crucible in which they can work through those things and then potentially see that, you know, you don't just have to like run away. You can actually work this stuff out. You can talk it through and they can take that and go and, and apply that to the relationships in their real lives. So in ways large and small, um, I have a, a much more interactive style. First of all, I often use the we pronoun. So although I'm not a member of Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics mm -hmm. Anonymous, I could easily be a, a member of Codependency Anonymous. Um, but I'm not, I'm not officially a member. But we're all human beings. We all have reward circuitry. We're all potentially vulnerable to the problem of addiction. So when I talk about addiction and I'm teaching patients, I'll use the we pronoun, right? And I'll use that you know, in a way that I think just like talking about kind of shared humanity. So that's a mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. kind of disclosure yeah. thing. And then I will periodically, depending upon the patient or the client, um, you know, actually say, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I can really relate to that. Or I, I've struggled with things like that too. Now you don't want to do that too much because of course, what is key to the therapeutic encounter is that we come to our patients with our emotional, physical, sexual needs met, right? We've mm -hmm. taken care of that elsewhere. So we are coming to them full up, right? We're not coming in need because they're coming to us in need. So we need to be able to be fully present for their needs. That's why we're there, right? We're focused on you and your needs, not, not my needs. And so as long as you know, we, we as therapists or psychiatrists or whatever it is are getting our needs met and, and practicing wellness and taking good care of ourselves so that we can come to our patients full up, then I think in that context, you know, being thoughtful about what we're doing, it's, it's okay to share that we also struggle. I think it can be incredibly helpful and humanizing for patients who are sometimes prone to put us kind of on a pedestal and imagine that our lives are perfect. <laughs> 
Yeah, which they certainly are not. Right. 